everyone. So today I'm gonna be challenging myself to make three pieces either in knit or crochet using mainly the color white. I was originally gonna do the color red first, but since it's winter time and it just seems to be better on themed with the season, I'm gonna go with white first. I also don't know if everything's gonna be knit or everything's gonna be crochet. I'm still in the designing process right now. Like usually I'll either design while I make the video or I design before the video so I know what I'm gonna be making so that I can figure out what yarn I need to get. But I'm kind of like in the in-between right now and <laughs> it, it might be a little bit chaotic this time. So I, I kind of had like a general idea of what I want to make. So I went ahead and made some designs and then ordered the yarn. But then after everything has been shipped, my design idea started to change and so I'm still gonna just work with what I what I got because I don't feel like returning yarn and I feel like it would be a waste if I don't use it. So I'm just gonna show you the designs that I'm thinking about and when the yarn gets here, I'll show you what the yarn looks like and then we can go ahead and get the challenge going. So I saw this Miffy bag right here and I thought this is the, the cutest thing ever and I know that there's fuzzy yarn that you can use to make like plushies and amigurumi. So I was like, what if I try to make this Miffy bag because it's fuzzy, it's perfect for winter time. And if you look at it, like it looks like it's gonna be easy to crochet. So that's one of, that's not an original design that you can see this is like the actual bag right here. But I thought making my own version with crochet would be cute using the fuzzy yarn. And then for some actual designs, I don't know if I want this to be knit or crocheted. It would be so much easier if I crocheted it, but someone on Instagram asked me to make knit hand warmers. So I was like, what if I take this time to do that type of challenge? Cause I've never made knit hand warmers ever in my life. If I knit these, I'll probably just make them flat. And then this, like the same way you would do a crochet one, I would just make it flat, put it together, sew the sides together, leave a thumb hole and call it a day. <laughs> but we'll see when we get there. Um, I was thinking of doing one with like a little heart graph in the middle and then you can add like a, I can add like a little ribbon bow cause I have a lot of them in the closet. And then this one would just be striped. Um, I think that might be cute. And then I was also thinking of making a, I didn't draw anything out, but I'm thinking of doing a cardigan but with faux fur yarn. So the same yarn that I'll use for the Miffy bag, I'll use for like a cardigan and then I'll add like a zipper to it and then a hoodie to make it a jacket. And I feel like that would be really cool. Um, this idea I thought of last year, but I wasn't able to do it because I had to go out of town. Um, but this time I'm still going out of town, but I have more time to do my projects. So I'm going to try to do it this time. I've never added a zipper to any of my projects, so I'm pretty nervous about that. But I think that I'm hoping it'll work out. I'm, I'm sure you know what worked out because you saw the thumbnail and the intro, but you know, I don't know yet. So I thought of doing a skirt like this. Like I was thinking of for my purple crochet dress, I used like a kind of like a bubble-y looking stitch. I was thinking of doing that for this skirt. And then after I would do two layers to make it like a mini skirt and stuff. Um, my drawings are trash and it's hard to explain, but I, I see the visual in here. So hopefully I can bring it to life. Um, but those are all of the designs I have so far. Um, I don't know what's going to work out, what's not, but I'm really happy and excited to start this. Um, I can't start it right now because I don't have the yarn yet. So we're going to go ahead and cut to when I do. Three hours later. Okay, so it's the same day, but a couple hours later, I checked the mail and I actually did get some of the yarn today, but it's not for the projects that I want to do in this video. It's for the projects in my next video. Like the only yarn that I got for this video is this white yarn here. Um, I got two of them. Um, I also did get some fuzzy yarn as well. I'm going to have a little video right here to show the yarn because it's in another room right now. So I'm just going to go ahead and start with my Miffy bag and then my hand warmers. And I think I am going to do the knit versions and then 
I'll just show the yarn as I'm working on the specific piece. Um, but yeah, I'm gonna first start with the Miffy bag. For the Miffy bag, I first chained 37 and worked half double crochet down the entire chain. At the end of the row, I chained 2 and turned my work. I continued repeating this until I got to 16 rows, which I originally wanted to be at least 20 or 25, but I didn't have enough of the fuzzy yarn for it. I originally wanted the Miffy bag to be a round bag like this one here, but if you can see, my attempt at a round bag was just not working. And this was unfortunately my third attempt at it, so square Miffy it had to be. After making a second panel, I slip stitched the sides and the bottom of the bag together, which was complicated, but I was able to do it. Working with this yarn wasn't the best time for me since I think the bulkiness of it was making my hands hurt pretty bad and I was getting small yarn burns, if that's even a thing, on both of my hands. After slip stitching it together, I started the ears, that's also the handles. I first added stitch markers to random parts of the front of the bag to make sections for where the ears should go, but then made sure that I had 8 stitches in between where I wanted the ears to be and then 4 stitches in the middle of those two sections. So both ears were 8 stitches wide and there's a 4 stitch gap between them. I then attached my yarn to the first stitch marker stitch, chained one, and then worked half double crochet into the next stitch marker. At that stitch marker, I chained two, turned my work, and continued working rows of half double crochet until I got to 28 rows for the ears. To attach the ear on the other side of the bag, I first turned the paddle a little bit inside out, but not completely. I just did this so the seam wouldn't show on the right side of the bag. After it was where I wanted it to be, I slip stitched the end to the back panel and then the first ear was done. All I had to do was repeat this for the second ear. Once the second ear was done, all that was left to do was Miffy's face. I took a long piece of black yarn in my tapestry needle and inserted it into where I wanted the mouth to be. I also placed my eyes that I was going to use onto the bag just to see where it was best to put the mouth. I then sewed it in and out making two threads of yarn for each direction needed. For the eyes, I moved them up a little bit and then added the backs to the eyes so that they'd stay where I put them. The last thing I did was add a black bow to one of the ears. At first, I was going to use a lavender color, but I loved the black bow corresponding with the black of the eyes and mouth, so I decided to just use black, and it ended up looking pretty cute. The first piece that I completed was my Miffy bag. This is not an original design. Um, I originally wanted it to look just like the one that you could buy from the store with the round shape, but the round shape was just not working for me at all. So I ended up making Miffy have a very strong jaw, but she's still cute. And I gave her a black bow to complement her eyes, but she's still really cute. And I like how the handles are also her ears. It's very cute. This is what the inside looks like. I didn't leave in any of my ends, by the way. Oh, I also ran out of yarn. Like I was so close to finishing it, but I ran out of yarn. So I just used some white fluffy yarn that I had in my closet to finish it. Um, it's very noticeable, <laughs> I will say, but it's not like dramatic to the point where I'm like, oh my God, I have to fix it. So I'm not buying another thing of yarn just for me to use a tiny bit of it. And then the rest just goes into the closet. So I'm happy. This gives her personality, you know, and it's really cute. You just hold it like this and you're good to go. Um, I would rate this, I would rate this a 10 out of 10. It came out really cute. Um, this yarn is really hard to work with, but I still managed to get it done. Um, you all told me how to correctly put on these eyes and I did it and it worked and I was happy about that. And then the mouth was also really easy to do. I just did two pieces of yarn that way and two pieces of yarn that way and called it a day. But yeah, I'm really happy with my Miffy bag and I hope you like it too. 
The next project I worked on was the hand warmers. I used weight for yarn in white and pink and 5mm needles. First, I casted on 36 stitches and then worked 5 rows of ribbing, which was knit 1, purl 1. I was struggling a bit because the needles were a bit too slippery and unfortunately, I don't have 5mm bamboo needles right now. Also, if you don't know what I'm doing, I have a beginner knitting tutorial in my Rory Gilmore sweater tutorial that breaks down the basic knitting stitches and how to do them. After 5 rows of ribbing, I first labeled all the squares in my heart graph and then counted how many squares in total I needed for it. It said it's 9 across, so I first fold my ribbing in half and then picked a spot I thought would be good for the heart graft to be at. This was all disgusting but I chose for it to start after four stitches so the graft is the fifth and thirteenth stitch and everything in between those. I placed stitch markers in that area but I won't be starting the graft just yet. I first went ahead and did stockinette stitch for six rows. Stockinette stitch is just knitting the front side and then purling the back side. Once I finished 6 rows, it was time to start the graph. I first worked down until the first stitch marker, On my chart, it said to do four with white and one with pink, so I first worked four stitches and then on the fifth stitch, I added my pink color. Then when I went to the next four stitches, I went back to white, making sure it went under the pink yarn. After, I continued working the rest of the piece as normal. On the second row of the graph, which was the wrong side of the project, it says to do three stitches with white, three stitches with pink, and then three stitches with white again. So I first did my three stitches with white, then I switched to my pink, making sure it's under the white strand, and then finish the last three stitches with white. This is what it was looking like so far. I continued working the graph until the heart was complete, and after, I continued working with the white yarn for five rows. On row 21, I placed the hand warmer on my hand to see how it was looking. It reached five inches so far and close to my knuckles, so I thought this would be a good time to switch to my five rows of ribbing. After working five rows of ribbing, I cast it off and then placed the hand warmer on my hand and used stitch markers to mark where the thumb hole should be. After that, I took a long piece of white yarn in my tapestry needle and seamed the sides together, which was basically going into the little bar stitches in the middle of the Vs of each stitch. Once I got to the first stitch marker, I put the tapestry needle to the inside of the hand warmer to pull the yarn to the inside. I then cut off some of the yarn and used that to add to the second stitch marker. I continued seaming up until the hand warmer was complete. I finished the first hand warmer and if you can see it's pretty big and the heart isn't centered but if I like hold it to take off around like seven stitches it's more centered and it's more to my size so I think I'm gonna restart I'll just write like the correct cast on and everything for the beginning where I like usually will tell you like oh I did blah 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 cast on but all of the steps is literally the exact same um, I'm just gonna make it a bit smaller so I'm gonna do that off camera and then I'm going to move on to the second one 
After I remade the glove with a cast on of 26 instead of 36, I had to weave in all my ends. To do this, I just take one of the tails to make sure I'm on the inside of the glove, then use my tapestry needles to weave it into the little stitches diagonally. That way, when you look on the inside, the tail doesn't show on the right side of the project. I weaved it into three different sections, then cut the tail off. For the ends near the seams, where the sides were stitched together, I just weaved them into the stitches like this. And this is what the first glove looked like. For the second glove, I started it the exact same way as the first one with the cast on of 26 and 5 rows of ribbing. Then after the ribbing, I first did 2 rows of stockinette with the white. Then I added my pink yarn and did 2 rows of stockinette with the pink. I repeated this pattern picking up the opposite color at the beginning of the row and knitting with it instead of having to cut and add new yarn each time the row switches. At row 20, I worked 5 rows of ribbing with the white, then cast it off. I seamed the sides together just like the first glove, and after weaving the tails in, I was done. The last thing I did was a little bow, which was just a chain of 52. I chained one more after that, before cutting off and pulling the yarn to secure. I then took my tapestry needle and secured the chain onto the glove, before tying it into a bow. For the tails of the chain, I just weave them in and out of the chain before cutting off. And then, the hand warmers were complete. The next piece I made were these knit hand warmers. This was the first time I've ever knitted hand warmers, and they came out perfect, in my opinion. The heart looks like a heart. Um, sometimes it didn't when I put it on, but now that I'm looking at it, it does look more like a heart, and I really like that I added a little bow to the bottom of it. And I like how the other glove complements it, but it's not identical. Um, but yeah, I really like how these came out, and they were really easy. I feel like, I think I finished them in like two hours, so it's a quick little gift if you want to make it for somebody for the holidays. Um, get rid of some scrap yarn and call it a day, you know? Um, but I would rate these a 10 out of 10. I really like them. They're warm, they're easy to make, they're quick to make, and there's so many different ways you can make them with specific color themes. You can do any small graph on them, and they just come out really cute. I didn't get the yarn in time for my pants idea, so I decided to just go ahead with the mini skirt. Even when recording this voiceover, I still haven't received it, so... Yeah, this is the yarn I decided to use for the skirt and for the hook size, I used a five millimeter hook. To make the skirt, I first started with the ribbing. For the ribbing, I first chained six and worked one row of half double crochet. At the end of the row, I chained one and turned my work. From here until row 38, I worked half double crochet into the back loop only. Once I got to row 38, I first measured out the ribbing to make sure it was the perfect size for my waist. I always make sure that the ribbing is at least 3 inches below my waist size so that when it stretches, it stretches to my exact size. I slip stitched the sides of the ribbing together to join it in the round. I then placed one stitch marker on each side of the ribbing to let me know when I'd have to increase. To start the skirt, I first chained one and then worked one single crochet into whatever space I could around the row. At the stitch marker sections, I added two single crochets into them, which is how I increased for the hip sections on each row. Once I got back to the beginning of the row, I slip stitched into the first stitch, chained one, and turned my work. Then repeated working single crochet around for the next row. At the end of that row, I began working the stitch I used in my purple crochet video, which I still don't know the name of, unfortunately. For the stitch, I basically yarn over, insert my hook into the stitch, yarn over again, and pull through, which gives me three loops on my hook. I then go into the space below the stitch and yarn over and pull through, which 
which gives me four loops on my hook. I yarn over for the last time and pull through all four loops. And that's the stitch. I do this into every stitch, making sure that on the stitch marker stitches, I just add two in those sections. For the row after, I do one row of normal single crochet and I repeat switching between the two for a total of 20 rows or until I don't have to increase for my hips anymore. While I did this, I watched Berlizzi and his sister Brittany, which is always entertaining, and also finished watching a six hour game of Thrones retrospective because after season six, I just didn't feel like watching it anymore. And six hour plus videos are the go-to when crocheting. This is random, but I loved watching this one about the complete timeline of the game near. Like it helped me so much when I was getting through making my brown crochet maxi skirt. So far, this is what I have for the skirt. I'm not gonna show what it looks like, but like that, it goes to right here. And I think that's the perfect place to start the ruffle since it is a mini skirt. So what I'm thinking about doing is adding one row of single crochet in the front loops only. And that'll be like a little separator for where the ruffles will start and then where this part is. I'm going to show a picture of a denim skirt to show what I'm trying to go for, but then um, after I do one row in the front loop only, in the back loop I'm going to go ahead and increase into every single stitch with single crochet and then and then I'm going to do the ruffles how I usually do them in my skirts. I was going to give up on this, but I'm gonna, I'm gonna keep going and see how it turns out. Like I said I was going to do, I first attached this pink color to the row and began working single crochet in the front loop only. Once I got to the end of the row, I tied off and attached my white yarn to the back loops I didn't work in that's located on the inner side of the skirt. In the same stitch I attached the white in, I added one single crochet. I then worked two single crochets into every stitch in that row, which will begin the first ruffle layer. At the end of that row of increases, I just did whatever I felt like in terms of stitches for a total of 10 rows, not including the increase row and not including the last row. So for an example, this first row I did in double crochet, and then the next row I did in half double crochet. I switched randomly and even added this silvery yarn to add something fun to the mix. Here's a little chart of what I did for this first leader, including the row of increases. On row five, I worked half double crochet into the front loop only so that I have a place to start the second layer when I get to it. After the fifth row, I continued working rows with random stitches until I finished row nine. After binding off, I attached my yarn to the back loops that were left open on row five to start my second layer of the skirt. After the first row, I continued working the second layer of the skirt. I just finished row two of the second layer, and only then did I realize that while I was working on the second layer, I had my skirt flipped this way. So I was thinking I was working in the bottom of the skirt, but in reality, I was working in the front of the skirt because earlier I went into the back loops only thinking it was the front loops. So I made an error there. However, I kind of like how it's turning out instead because the bottom layer, I tried it on earlier so, and I liked how the length was for the top layer, which is now the bottom layer. And I was like, if I do my second layer, it will kind of like be a bit more longer than I want it to be. However, since I made this error that ended up not being that bad, I'm thinking of leaving this layer with only two rows so that this can still be the bottom layer and this be the top. I might add another row to this one just to make it a tiny bit longer than this. So I binded off the last row and then attached my white and pink to the end of the first layer and did one more row before binding off that one as well. And then the skirt was complete. I'm at the part where I wanna start decorating the skirt to make it more unique. So I went into my closet and I found this cute lace ribbon so i'm thinking of attaching it to like on the bottom of this layer of this layer and maybe somewhere over here i'm not sure i feel like that might be doing too much but if i want this to be over the top then i should be doing the most and then i went and grabbed some of these buttons that I, that was also in my closet i found these that i thought worked most with this skirt this button was in there and I think this is just the cutest button ever and I'm so sad that this was not in there at all. So I think I might just use these right here. 
instead because that's the only ones that have three in there but i really wish it was this one because this one's really cute um i don't have any pink ribbons i have this purple one i might go to the store to get a pink one but i'm not sure and then i kind of want to add something with this fuzzy yarn as well so I just have to figure it out. I ended up going to the store and getting these buttons, but I'm not sure where I'll be putting them just yet. So I just got started with sewing the lace ribbon on the bottom. It was pretty simple and I used a pink thread so the sewing wasn't noticeable. After, I added the same lace ribbon to the first layer in the middle. Now that the lace is on, I'm gonna start decorating this part. I tried it on and this right here is the middle. So this is where I'm deciding to add these little buttons here. And then I wanna do a ribbon here, a ribbon there, and then a ribbon here and a ribbon here on the hips and in the in between, like where my hip bones are right here. And then I'm gonna do like a little pink drawstring right here just in case it ends up loosening up the more that i wear it and everything and i know people are kind of getting tired of the ribbon trend but i'm not so i'm gonna add a whole bunch of ribbons to this i first sewed on the ribbon buttons where i wanted them to be it was a little difficult as the back wasn't like buttons i was used to but i got it secured i then made ribbons for the front by chaining 71 and then using my tapestry needle i pushed one of the legs of the ribbon through where i wanted it to be and then tied the ribbon for the side ribbons, I chained 101 and did the exact same with those, but just in the little section that separates the top from the bottom section. And lastly, I created a drawstring for the waist by chaining 150. I made sure to keep the ends of the drawstring on the inside since I felt like it would make the skirt look overrun by ribbons. And after all that, the skirt was complete. The next piece I have to show is my mini skirt that I made. Um, I can't show it on the screen, so I'll have a video right here. But this skirt, I was really doubtful of it, especially when I was doing the first half of it, like the torso part. But then once I got to the flare part and then started adding my little frillies, like the ones that I sewed on, the ribbon, it came out really, really cute. and. I wasn't able to use the button that I specifically wanted, but I found these really cute bow buttons instead, and I'm really happy with it, with how it came out. Adding the four ribbons on the top, like near my um, hip bones, and then on the sides of my legs on the skirt really added more creativity and detail to the skirt, and so I'm really happy with it. It's really cute. It's perfect for winter, and if you like the color pink, then it's perfect for you. Um, I would rate this a 9 out of 10. The only reason it's not 10 out of 10 is because I feel like I could have been more creative with the part where the buttons are located. Like, I feel like I could have spiced it up a bit more because it still looks a bit plain to me. But besides all that, I really do like the skirt. To start my fluffy jacket, I first chained 57 and began to half double crochet down the chain. After I got to the end of the row, I turned my work and continued with half double crochet. After the third row, I switched to double crochet just because I felt like half double crochet would make it take a bit too long. It was hard sometimes because I'd forget which stitch I was working in and even feeling around wouldn't help so at times I'd just have to start the entire row over which was a bit annoying to be honest. But I kept going because I really wanted to see if this project could come out the way that I wanted it to. Okay, so I'm on like row six right now. And then I just looked through like all the yarn that I bought for this specific project. And I did like 11 times six. This is how many rows that I could do with one skein. And that came up to 66 rows. So I was like, okay, there's no way I can make a whole jacket with this. So then I was thinking, what if I make a sweater vest, but like a zip up sweater vest. So I'm gonna take all of this apart and then I'm going to go ahead and do that with some regular white yarn as like the ribbing and then the fluffy part for the vest. And then that's gonna be that. I took the whole thing apart and chained 31, which was slightly past my shoulder width, which ended up being 17 and a half inches. I then double crocheted for five rows, which was seven inches in length. For the arm decreases on row six, I decreased into the first and second stitches.
then worked the row normally until the last two stitches where I decreased into as well. I continued this until row 8. I want the fluffy part to stop under my chest, so I stopped decreasing on row 8 and continued working normal double crochet rows until row 12. After, I finished the panel and went to make the two front panels. For the front panels, I made them each with a starting chain of 14. I chose this number since 30 divided by 2 is 15, but I didn't want it to be exactly in the middle since I was going to be adding a zipper. For the front panels, I did the exact same thing as the back panel, except I only decreased on one side for the arms. Once the front panels were complete, I went ahead and slip stitched them together on the top and the sides, making sure to leave open the armholes. Alright, I look like a mess right now, but I really wanted to show that I finished so far the fluffy part of the vest. It came out really cute and it fits good. Um, so now I'm going to go ahead and start working on the bottom ribbing. but. At first I was like, I want it to be kind of small, but I have the zipper that I'm going to be using and it's really long. Like it goes, it goes to my belly button. So what I'm thinking about doing is making the ribbing the length of how much is left over of the zipper. And it stops right here, so I'm probably going to make the ribbing like this long. And so I won't have to like buy a new zipper or try and cut it. it. It can just be one and done. And then I am gonna, I'm thinking about adding ribbing to the sides. I might not, but we'll just see how the ribbing on the bottom goes. I first placed the zipper where I'd want it to end at the top of the vest and added a stitch marker to that part on each side. I then measured how much left of the zipper there was from that particular placement, which was three and a half inches. With that knowledge, I went ahead and attached my white yarn to the first front edge of the vest and chained 14. I then worked one row of half double crochet before slip stitching into the next two stitches. After, I turned my work and worked up the row of half double crochet, but in the back loop only to create the ribbing effect. I repeated this going around the entire vest until I reached the end of the second front section. I also did the exact same thing for the armholes. For the zipper, I first poked half an inch holes into the zipper and then used a tapestry needle to pull the yarn through the holes to form loops I can work into to secure the zipper to the vest. After the yarn was pulled into the zipper, I began to single crochet up the zipper and the vest so that it's secured. Once the zipper was attached on both sides, the fluffy vest was complete. This is the last piece that I worked on, and I will say that throughout the process, it was going perfectly well, like making the back panel, the front panels, everything was perfect. Even the ribbing, even though I don't really like how it came out, it still was working fine. The one part that really like tore my spirit down and made me want to just forget about the whole project in the first place was adding the zipper. Now, the way that I added the zipper was perfectly fine and attached, but the issue was the type of zipper that I purchased. I got the zipper like a year ago from Amazon for a fluffy jacket, but I never made it. So it was just sitting in the back of the closet until I needed it now. But the one mistake that I made when buying the zipper was just choosing whatever zipper, but at the end of the zipper, like right here, there was a stopper and usually that's fine, but this stopper had like, like it was like after this stopper was a whole bunch of more fabric indicating like this is a type of zipper that you would use for a bag. But for jackets, you have to unzip it completely so you can put it on. But this one wasn't unzipping correctly. So I cut that off. And then this part right here, this would not attach. It took me almost an hour and 30 minutes just to get it attached. And then I was just like, okay, I'm not doing that again. So what I do to put it on is I, I just unzip it to right here. I pull it over my head and zip it back up and hang it up. Um, maybe when I go buy a real jacket zipper, 
I'll take this off and then put it back on and everything. I kind of have some of the ends um, not weaved in for that fact. Past that, I really like how this came out. If I would make another one, I would do like a more tighter ribbing and maybe make it a bit longer. Like I really thought it was gonna stop at my belly button, but it doesn't, but it's still really cute. Um, off camera, I added these little collar flap things. It was just like a couple of crochets for three rows. And then I weaved in the side so it'd stay down, but I left these parts open so that you can like flare it out if you want to. And yeah, this wasn't a fail, but it was just like really irritating to do because of the zipper. Um, but if you buy the right zipper, then you won't have any problems when making this. And of course, fluffy yarn is hard to work with. Um, so I work slower than I usually would do. So I'll probably give this like an eight out of 10. Um, it's not an original design. There's fur vests all over the place, nothing new, but I think it's cool that I was able to make one from scratch for myself in case I wanted one. So now if I want a pink one or a black one, I can do that. I hope you enjoyed all the pieces in this video. Let me know which one was your favorite and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.